look at page seven here. So uh, number one, a force of five newtons is pushing a box to the side. It causes it to accelerate five meters per second squared. What's the mass of the box? Well, we know the force. We know the acceleration. We're looking for mass. I know the equation that relates force acceleration and mass or force mass and acceleration is F equals MA whether or not this is solving for a net force or a force of gravity or something else um, so start by writing our formula in. that's what I did over here we know that our force is equal to 5 newtons from the problem we know that our acceleration is equal to 5 meters per second squared from the problem. These aren't normally going to be the same, it's just happenstance that in this particular problem they, they happen to be the same number. Um, which makes my my math here look a little bit weird because is it is it that I divided this number by this number and then did the same thing to this side or vice versa. But remember it's anytime we're trying to solve for a problem we're trying to get the variable on its own. So I am taking this m and multiplying it by 5. Well, how do I get m by itself? I'm going to get rid of the 5. So I'm going to end up dividing by 5 so that I get this to cancel. And of course, if I do it to one side, I've got to do it to the other side. 5 divided by 5 leaves me with 1. m's on its own. So we have mass is equal to 1. And then think about what that 1 represents. I'm solving for mass. So anytime I solve for mass, I know that I'm going to be in kilograms because that's what mass has to be in for using or when using F equals MA if we want force to be in newtons mass has got to be in kilograms acceleration has to be in meters per second squared so remember one newton is really one kilogram meter per second squared All right, let's take a look at number two a uh, box has a mass of 55 kilograms, so I'm taking that mass, or that number, inserting it in for my mass. We know that it's being pushed with a force of 10 newtons, so I'm putting my 10 in for force. How fast is it going to accelerate? So we don't know A, leave it as A. All right, so if I want to get A by itself, since it's being multiplied by 55, I've got to divide it by 55. So 55 divided by itself will end up canceling. If I do it to one side, I have to do it to the other side here. So 10 divided by 55 gives me 0.18. And then we've got to realize, since I'm dealing with acceleration here, acceleration is always going to be in meters per second squared when using this formula. So I'm left with meters per second squared. So final answer is 0.18 meters per second squared. And like anything in physics, look at the number, ask yourself, think to yourself, does this make sense? Does it relate to the problem? Is it, is it the actual answer that I'm looking for? Um, so it's got a box, it has a mass of this, it's pushed across a f um, with a floor with a force of this. How fast is it going to accelerate? Well, I'm looking for acceleration meters per second squared tells me that I'm dealing with acceleration so that's why the units are so important because those units are gonna tell you um, what concept they're associated with meters per second squared is gonna be as associated with acceleration so if I ended up coming out with something else in Newton's and I'm being asked how fast will accelerate it doesn't make so much sense to say oh uh, it accelerates this many Newton's that just sounds weird so we would know that just that doesn't work out it's got to be in something other than other than Newton's and we'd go back to the drawing board redo the problem and see if we come out with something that's in meters per second squared which gives us acceleration all right number three a box is accelerating at 12 meters per second squared it's got a mass of 12 kilograms how much force is acting on the box well we know the mass 12 kilograms we know the acceleration 12 kilograms we know that F equals MA relates or the force formula relates our acceleration and our mass we're being asked for a force so force equals mass times acceleration mass of 12 acceleration of 12 12 times 12 gives us 144 newtons 
And again, ask yourself, does it make sense that it would be in newtons? You're being asked for something to do with force. Newtons has to do with force. We know that we're good to go. All right, let's take a look at number four here. Um, we know that we've got this force of 15 newtons. It's pushing out a box. Um, to the right, and 12 newtons of force pushing to the left. What's the acceleration of the box if we have a mass of 6 kilograms? All right, so what's difficult here is we have two forces. And if I use my formula for force, it's just F equals MA, it's like, well, which one of these do I plug into my force formula? It's actually neither. Um, so here's the deal. We've got to set up a free body diagram to begin with in order to really see what force I'm going to be using. So we've got a force of 15 newtons pushing on a box to the right. So that's what's going on here. And 12 newtons pushing to the, the left. So 12 newtons pushing to the left. And there's a couple ways I can represent left. I can just call it negative direction. So negative 12 newtons. Or I could literally point with my free di body diagram to the left, 12 newtons this way. So when I go to look at what my net force is, if I'm pulling with 15 newtons of force one direction, 12 newtons of force the other direction, it's going to go in one of these directions. I'm not adding these up or anything like that. We know that it's basically like a tug of war match. 15 newtons, 15 strength points is bigger than 12 newtons or 12 strength points. So it's actually going to be that I'm moving in the rightward direction overall with a total of three newtons worth of force. So this side is the winner by three. 15 minus 12 gives me three newtons. That's going to be the force that I am dealing with in this problem. Because if I've got two people pushing on it, one person wins, so to speak. They win by three newtons. Well, how much, how much mass are they getting to accelerate? Well, we already know the mass of the box is six. So we've got a net force of three newtons. We have a mass of 6 kilograms. We're solving for an acceleration. All right, so get A by itself. We're going to divide by 6. If I do it to one side, I have to do it to that other side. 3 divided by 6 gives me 1 over 2, which is a half. As a decimal, that is 0.5. And it's an acceleration, so it's meters per second squared. What direction would the box be traveling? What is the acceleration? So we've got a couple of answers here that we have to or qu a couple questions here that we have to answer. So we know that the box is going to be traveling to the right. It's part of my answer. And then mathematically we found out that not only is that box going to be traveling to the right, specifically going to be accelerating as it's traveling towards the right at a rate of 0.5 meters per second squared. So now we've done all these crazy problems over here. So 5 is a little bit of a breather. Uh, we've got a 13 kilogram horse object pulling a carriage with a certain force causes it to accelerate at 3 meters per second squared. How much force is the horse exerting? Well, we know its mass. Um, we know the acceleration of the horse is 3 meters per second squared. Um, that means that the force must be 39 newtons. So simply 13 times 3. We're good to go. Uh, let's take a look at question six here. Ball's rolling down a driveway. It's got 90 newtons of friction opposing its motion. So we could say that here's our driveway. Here's the ball. The ball is rolling in this direction. Friction is opposing its motion by 90 newtons. We want to determine the ball's mass if it slows down at a rate of 4 meters per second squared. Right? So if it's if it's got a force of 90 newtons resisting it, um, it's slowing down at a rate of 4 meters per second squared. So that's why I put negative 4 here. We're going to end up solving for its mass. So in order to get uh, mass by itself, we've got to get rid of the negative 4. So if I do it to one side, I've got to divide on the other side. I end up with negative 90 divided by negative 4. 
Uh, when I do a negative divide by a negative, I'm going to get a positive, and it would make sense that since I'm dealing with mass, I should be in the positives because I can't have negative mass. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense, so we got to make sure that our math matches with our sense or our logic. Um, I'm left with 90 divided by 4 gives me 22.5 kilograms. So the ball would end up weighing 22.5 kilograms. All right. Um, so our ball rolls, but it still experiences friction. What's the proof that it experiences friction? Well, if, if a ball is rolling down the driveway and it's slowing more and more and more, it should, in theory, be going on forever, right? Because if the ball has inertia, which all objects have inertia, whether or not they're at rest or in motion, small objects or big objects, it just has to do with um, the mass of an object has to do with the amount of inertia that it will have. But I've got a ball that's 22.5 kilograms here. That's going to have a lot of inertia moving this way. If I have nothing pushing on it, it should go forever. So why does it stop? Well, there must be some sort of force that is causing it to stop then. There's some sort of force that's opposing its motion, that's holding it back. The only force that is holding it back is going to be some sort of resistive force, which we would just call friction. All right, number seven. Seven trips some people up, quite a bit of people up um, over the years and this year too. But um, we've got a one kilogram pencil. It's being pushed along paper at a rate of two meters per second squared. Um, and we know it's being pushed with 12 newtons of force. So how much friction is acting on it? All right, well, um, first of all, this isn't a super realistic scenario just because the pencil it's not one kilogram. That would be 2.2 .2 pounds. So that'd be a really big pencil, like one of the Disney World pencils or something like that. So I have this pencil, and I know that I'm pushing it along the paper at a rate of 2 meters per second squared. What is exactly does that tell me? Well, I know that the net force is going to be equal to F, or F, sorry, will be equal to its mass times an acceleration. So the mass of the pencil we know is one kilogram. I know that it is experiencing an acceleration of two meters per second squared. One kilogram times two meters per second squared gives me a force of two newtons. So it looks like we're pretty good here. Go back to the problem and see, does it answer? So if it's being pushed with 12 newtons of force, how much friction is acting on it? Uh, I am dealing with force, but it doesn't make so much sense because it says this is my net force, not my force of friction. So then what the heck is this 12 over here talking about? Because I just solved for a force and I got two, and this force tells me 12. So that may not seem to make a whole lot of sense at first, but if you have a free body diagram drawn, it helps. So we know that the pen is being pushed with 12 newtons of force. So that's where I'm getting this from. It's being pushed in this direction with 12 newtons worth of force. All right, so we know also, though, that it's accelerating at 2 meters per second squared, and we know that it's 1 kilogram. So that means that the force should be 2 newtons. How can both these be correct? It's because of friction. So we could be pushing this pencil across the paper with 12 newtons of force in this direction, but it only experiences acceleration as if there were two newtons worth of force because there's some sort of force that's canceling part of that 12 out. So 10 of those 12 newtons are canceled out by friction, the force of friction. So in other words, um, how much friction is acting on it? Well, if it's only experiencing two newtons worth of force in the forwards direction, but we're pushing with 12, there must be 10 newtons worth of friction acting against it, the force of friction acting against it. 